Um, so, how would you describe SFOMA's relationship to its public at the moment, and how has this changed over well, the time? I think you know when I was when I when I first uh, came here, for example, public programs, uh, the budgets for public programs were uh, a percentage of the exhibition budget. When you first came to SFOMA. Yeah. So I uh, combined all those percentages into one uh, budget for public programs. And so now, you know, in public programs, we can look at the whole year and we can think about not the audience for an exhibition that might go to a program, but a, a public for programs, you know, the, the, the larger public, you know, some of whom are motivated to go to the program because of an exhibition and some because of some other interest or commitment or involvement uh, they have. So that was that was actually a big shift where we started to think of, you know, the public for public programs as being, uh, you know, uh, something of its own uh -huh. rather than being some fraction of the visitors to the museum or the visitors to the exhibitions. You stated that when you start working at SF MoMA, like in the mm -hmm. interview I read yesterday, mm -hmm. there wasn't any educational department? I, I think there was an education department, there was no inter IET department. Oh, there was no IET, but there was something called service department. Was it, what is oh, that? Oh, oh, I see. It was, it was more of a service department. Oh, I, what I meant by that was mm -hmm. that there was no education curator when mm -hmm. I started working. Um, so it wasn't the full curatorial department. It was, I was actually working in curatorial at the time as a curatorial assistant, but the education team was kind of like the publications team or you know the operations team or there, you know, there's the other teams that kind of, or the installation team, they serve the needs of the exhibition program or of the museum without having their own agenda. Yeah without their having their own mandate and mission. And when John Weber was hired in 1993, uh, he was hired as the first curator of education and public programs. And he came from a contemporary art background, and he had been a curator of contemporary art at the Portland Art Museum. So he was a colleague, a curatorial fellow and colleague of all the other department curators who had painting and sculpture, photography, media arts, architecture and design, and they could all be in discussion about the ideas in their shows, and John could meanwhile be curating and developing programs that were our own. Yeah. I think the struggle, the identity struggle for museums in the 21st century is to understand that they're fundamentally a public institution. They're a place for, um, for education and experience for a public. You know, maintaining a collection is only part of the set of responsibilities mm -hmm. to be of value to the public. And I think that's fundamentally the, um, what we're trying to shift, to understand that we're here for the visitor. We're not here to, for the collection. Yeah. We'll maintain a collection, but, but we're not a warehouse. We're a public yeah. space. Mm -hmm. What we try to achieve in the reinstallation is um, a number of things. One is to, to have uh, a gallery experience in the art galleries that, that took advantage of our history and natural science capacity. Mm -hmm. So we created an interdisciplinary exhibition with our collections. Uh, we also um, reorganized a, about uh, 900 works of art uh, according to theme rather than chronology or medium. Uh, we built um, 
a, a bunch of um, other things that we hope would transform the museum from being a place where um, the public merely uh, sort of had a passive role, but they had a much more active role in experiencing art. Um, I think ultimately um, we all have um, educational responsibilities. You know, I think curators have to understand that um, uh, letting the public understand what experiencing a work of art is like and what it can be like is, is a part of our responsibility. We simply can't just put it on the wall and walk away. One of our great successes is our, our ability uh, internally to work across functions. You know, traditionally, um, you know, there's this tension between education and curatorial. Curatorial thinks education is trying to dumb things down and education thinks cur curatorial has no interest in the public. Um, so we've, um, actually we have a very um, intimate um, re relationship with the education department. Um, so that's one of the things that we very much are conscious of in terms of our new museum model, you know. Right. Well, you know, I think the thing here is that, uh, uh, I mean, in, in the recent history of the museum, um, you know, as you know a little bit, you know, museum moved uh, 15 or more years ago from being just part of a, of a much older building in the Civic Center to, to this current site, which 15 or 16 years ago was uh, a very... Um, you know, undeveloped part of the city and not visited and kind of dangerous. And uh, so the, the museum that was built at that time was a little bit built as a, as a, as a you know, as a strong institution, uh, you know, to, to have a, a credible presence in this, what was then a, a, a kind of something of a, a, a you know, you know, a non-place, you know, mm -hmm. within the urban you know, uh, fabric. Now the city has developed and this whole district has developed and, and, and actually in the next phase what we're trying to do is sort of return to the city a little bit and to, to, to invest the new SF Mama in, with a kind of spirit of, if you like, openness and, and generosity uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, that, you know, we're now in a position to be able to, to express. Oh, that's, that's a really good question. Um, you know, discussions have been going on around the museum uh, lately that are very different kinds of discussions than, you know, were happening, say, 10 years ago. Um, and I think you and I've talked a little bit about this, um, but here's a specific example. Um, fam the family audience, you know, and sort of even thinking about what the needs of family audience uh, might be, just, you know, the sort of the physical needs, the amenity, you know, the needs on the amenity side of things, much less, you know, the, the educational needs, um, is a conversation that is so different today than it was a number of years ago. You know, because there have been these studies that say that, um, that family visits, particularly in conjunction with school visits, so, um, Adults who are current museum um, goers have indicated in various surveys that have been done by various people over the years that um, uh, that if they came to the museum on a school visit and they came to the museum with their family that they you know became sort of lifelong museum goers and so if we need to propagate a generation of future museum goers then in my mind it would make sense to really invest in making sure the family programs and school programs um, that we can offer here are sort of the best they can be and serving as many people as we can in um, in as in-depth you know sort of ways that we can possibly do it sort of quality you know in-depth kinds of experiences because that's how you're going to build the future museum you know audience um, who then of course you know could potentially be the donors and the collectors and the you know the the staff and you know the artists uh, that then you know continue to make an institution like this function yeah. and relevant